What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for, I believe, episode number four of the Yee Yee Lifestyle, if I remember right. This is a Wednesday, so this week I decided to upload a Yee Yee Lifestyle. Um, I hope more of you guys end up watching it, because we're going to be talking more more football and a little more Jaguar stuff in this Yee Yee Lifestyle podcast, but there's still some other things to talk about. Um, like the zit, the zit update, I, I'm glad, I'm really glad that a lot of you were very concerned, you know, I got, there's 20 comments on the video, and I think at least 7 of them were people telling me remedies or things to do with this zit, so, you know, I appreciate you guys, shout outs to all my subscribers who said you guys don't care about your boy, I never said that, you guys, uh, helped me out, gave me a lot of helpful advice, um, it's still there, it's still there, and it looks terrible, you know, I've been putting shit on it, but, it's uh, it's definitely been probably the worst case of acne or the worst zit I've ever had in my entire life. Um, and you know it, it's been bad because uh, it's partial. I don't know how much you. It's true that you can get zits from stress, but if you can get zits from stress, then your boy definitely got the zit from stress. I've been I've been working, man. I've been putting in the hours. You know, my new job, trying to, you know, kind of not take over per se but just to make sure that I'm a good employee and I'm accountable and there's just, there's a lot on my plate with that and it's it's different from my other scenario where I had two jobs and at those two jobs I really only had one responsibility for each I mean in my production job at the news station I had I guess technically two jobs because you know I'd put the show together and then I'd run audio or cameras for the newscast but you know it was just simple and I wasn't and I was never at one place all day. That's been a change of pace for me, to be honest. Like, I am not used to just working at one place the whole entire eight-hour day and then going home. You know, I'm used to bouncing around between two jobs and then the hours, man. The hours have been killer. That's basically been the the hardest thing to get used to because back when I worked my two jobs, I worked 2 to 12.30 between two jobs. And in this job, I work... Usually, it, it varies, usually from 10 a.m., which is not early to a lot of you, but from a guy that is myself, and I'd get up at 12 or 1 o'clock, you know, get ready for work, and then go to work, you know, for a year, and almost two years, and, you know, now kind of making that switch and trying to go to bed earlier. You know, if you guys have any remedies of going to bed earlier, you know, leave that in the comment section down below, because that's something that I really need. I struggle. I struggle trying to go to bed early. It's not even that... I'm doing a lot of things at night. It just feels like during my nighttime is like the only time I get to relax because, you know, I'm working all day and then I come home and I got to make a YouTube video. And I'm not saying that YouTube is terrible and I'm hating YouTube right now. I'm just saying that it's an extra responsibility. And I know, you know, people are going to say, oh, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. Well, there's two reasons why I do it. Reason number one is because I love it. I love that I don't know any of you and you guys are subscribed to me and you guys are commenting on the videos, liking, subscribing, everything like that. And it means the world to me and it's cool because I'm building a kind of a little community. Like there's so many subscribers that I know now based, like I know their names on YouTube because they comment on my videos all the time. And like, I feel like I'm close to those guys and you know, I really have, learn to you know love all my subscribers especially those that have been around since like the 300s or like the 200s I know there's a couple of people that have been around since then I mean Christopher Columbus you know obviously that's my guy he's gonna be at well I invited him he should be at my wedding like that's that's how right or die he is you know him and Jay Dang those were my two original like bros that subscribed to me and really helped me uh believe in myself that I could do this YouTube shit so I I love doing YouTube and two, I'm so close to a thousand subscribers. Like, this is so close to being, like, something that I can actually make money off of while I do it. And I'm just really excited to get that side money. Even though it's not going to be a lot at first, you know, just having that extra money in the bank is huge. It's awesome. And it's like having two jobs again. And it, it kind of, you know, helps me feel like I'm back on track to where I used to be. And, you know, having those two jobs. And the fact that I get paid to do what I love on the radio and the fact that I get paid... I'll be getting paid to make Jaguar videos living in Lewiston, Idaho on YouTube. It's just it's just unreal to me, and I'm really, really excited for that opportunity. And I'm really excited that you guys are, you know, sticking around for it, and you guys have been around, and, you know, there's more and more to come. This is definitely not a farewell podcast, you know. There's still so much more left in the tank. Uh, 
you know, I'm going to be here for a while. Like, there's there's no reason for me to leave or jump ship. But, you know, and it's, it's still going to be a lot of Jaguar-related content, which is where I want to talk right now. And UCF Jaguar, my boy, um, released a video the other day. It's like a couple weeks ago, actually, talking about will the Jaguars actually be good next year? And that's a good question because that this is a team right now that is built and it seems like they're either going to win five games, like they're going to be trash, or we're going to the playoffs and we're going to have a really good year. I don't see us having a mediocre year. I don't see us going 9-7, and 8-8, eight and eight, missing the playoffs. I see us either tanking so bad, going 5-11, and 11, missing the ship, or we're going to go 13-3, and 12-4, 11-5, somewhere like that, and make the playoffs. And I think that the AFC South, as of right now, is a little overrated. I think the AFC South is wide open. You know, people always are talking, and it seems like this is how it is every year. Andrew Luck's in there. The Colts are really always heavy favorites to win the Super Bowl, but I just don't, I don't see it, man. Like, I understand they have some young talent around them, but most of that great young talent is on the offensive line, and though it is terrific to have a great offensive line, it's like, how much is that going to help you win games at the end of the day you know what I mean giving Andrew Luck time to throw sure but you're facing this Jaguar defense twice a year this Titans defense twice a year that's just getting better and better every single year it seems like and I just Andrew Luck man the most overrated quarterback in the NFL like I mean sure there's some games he goes out there he looks elite top of the pack next like Tom Brady Peyton Manning type of a guy but he gets hurt a lot and when he has bad games he has bad games he hasn't consistently shown me enough that he's been great to say that he's a great quarterback, you know what I mean? Or for him to be necessarily a threat. You want to talk about this team the Colts have? They're on, like, the way to clinching the playoffs. They ran into a Jacksonville Jaguar team that only had three wins, and they had Andrew Luck the entire time, and the Jags had Cody Kessler, and the Jags still found a way to win with Cody Kessler as their quarterback. Now, I'm sorry, I'm just not worried about that, especially now that we have Nick Foles, and I think that that's where the underlying underratedness comes from from the Jacksonville Jaguars is people are underrating Nick Foles and underrating his abilities and I think us as fans as well kind of did that when we first signed him but now that you see him in OTAs you see what he's doing he's a quarterback that's something that the Jags have not had in a super long time it's just an actual quarterback that knows what he's doing it seemed like year in year out the Jags wanted to get these guys that were building projects and they wanted to have their own homegrown quarterback that was terrible and that they could build from the mud but they haven't proved to do that and they couldn't keep a staff around consistently long enough to do that and now probably for the first time in a while I think Mark Brunel I guess I guess you can kind of count that the first time the Jags are really relying on a veteran quarterback that they've acquired through free agency to take into the promised land and that's I think what the Jags have been missing you know year in and year out you hear Jags fans talk about how oh if we just had a game manager that's all we need is a game manager Alex Smith get us in there we're winning 12 games we're going to the Super Bowl you got that with Nick Foles and more the guy doesn't do a lot of turnovers so he's a game manager in that sense but he could also sling the fucking rock dude he can throw the ball deep that is what he's known for. You think he, they call him Big Dick Nick because his dick's actually big? I mean, it probably is. The man's a stud and a legend, but it's because he makes ballsy down the field throws that always seem to work, and they're never bad throws. Like, these ballsy throws down the field, they're in tight coverage, but he makes it to the receiver. Nick Foles is a top-tier quarterback, prove me wrong, and he's going to help the Jaguars make a case to win the AFC South this year. And... You look at the quarterback tiers now, and yeah, sure, Andrew Luck may still be the first and second best quarterback in this division by default, but you look at the bottom with Mariota and Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson got exposed last year in the playoffs. He's not a threat in the playoffs, but really what the Jaguars need to worry about is regular season Deshaun Watson, and that's that's the Deshaun Watson that plays well, shows up, and does good things. We've seen it, you know, last year made the playoffs, but it's an off year for the Jags, what can I say? I'm not insanely worried about Deshaun Watson. I'd still take Nick Foles over Deshaun Watson. Not for the long term, but for right now, to try and win a Super Bowl, I would take my chances with Nick Foles over taking my chances with Deshaun Watson, if that makes sense. And Marcus Mariota's bottom-of-the-barrel fucking garbage, fucking trash quarterback. 
I don't even care. Say what you want about him being able to beat the Jaguars, sure. But you guys aren't going to make the postseason this year. You ain't going to make the postseason. You ain't going to make, you know, the big necessary steps to make it deep in the playoffs with Marcus Mariota. Because, sure, he has these flash in the pans. You know, it's just kind of like Andrew Luck. There's some days that this kid looks so fucking athletic, and you think, man, maybe this is the guy that takes Tennessee to the promised land. But year in and year out, he proves you wrong, and he proves that he is not a good quarterback. He's just not. He's had a year where he's thrown more interceptions and touchdowns. He gets hurt often. And when he's in there, he's not necessarily a game changer. He's not. Like, he doesn't change the game as much as he should. Has he changed games before? Yeah. Does he do it as often in and out as he should? 100% no. 100% no. Marcus Mariota is not that dude. And that's why I should not. It, we shouldn't be concerned. Because good teams have good quarterbacks. And that's what the Jaguars have been missing for a while now is a good quarterback to rely on year in and year out to do the necessary things that a quarterback has to do for an NFL football team to win. And we have that Nick Foles. So a playoff push and a playoff berth should definitely be in the realistic points of views of Jaguar fans, analysts, everybody. If you watch the NFL, you should consider the Jacksonville Jaguars this year as a playoff contender. They have all the pieces. You want to talk wide receivers? Let's talk wide receivers. These guys fit the scheme perfectly. You know, and that is another thing, too. Let's talk about that. Let's stray away from the Jags for a little bit. The most overrated position on any NFL team that you can have is a true 50-50 number one wide receiver. Does it help? Yes. Awesome. It's great. It's tremendous when you have that type of talent. It is. But how far do these wide receivers take you? You know, how much can you rely on these guys to win you football games? You can't get the ball to these number one wide receivers to help you win football games because your quarterback is bad. I mean, you look at guys that are top tier, top talent wide receivers, but they don't make a difference on their team. Sure, they put up the stats, and sure, you know, when they win their six, seven games a year, they may be that it factor to help them out, but they're not going to single-handedly take a team to the playoffs. No. That's why paying for a great wide receiver is so overrated. It's so overrated. You look at guys like Mike Evans. Year in and year out, 1,000-yard guy. Top of the league in receiving yards and receiving touchdowns seems like every year. How do the Tampa Bay Buccaneers do year in and year out? Terrible, because they don't have a good quarterback. Sure, you've invested in this wide receiver, and you've put a lot of money into him. But how much is that going to help you win games? At the end of the day, you look at guys like Julio Jones. Sure, they've made the Super Bowl, but did they win that Super Bowl? That's a bad example. That's a terrible example because I think Matt Ryan played well in that Super Bowl, which is a big choke job. So I'm going I'm to I'm take away my Julio Jones reference. Let's talk about Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen. Best wide receiver duo in the league. Could they drag Kirk Cousins out of the mud this year and make it to the playoffs? No, they couldn't because they can't win you games. Being a great number one wide receiver is great. It's great for fantasy football owners, I'll tell you that. But it's not great if you're an NFL GM trying to build a team around this wide receiver. It's just not going to work. It's never worked. It's never been that way. It's never been, let's find us a franchise wide receiver. No, because the great teams that do that have great quarterbacks and guys that fit their scheme and decent wide receivers. You need a quarterback to survive in this league. Getting these wide receivers is pointless. I think the, the Browns made a good move getting Odell Beckham Jr. because they already have a really good quarterback. That's another good example. The Giants with OBJ. How many times did they make the playoffs? I mean, that's just... Eli Manning was terrible and not in his prime anymore. Couldn't, you know, OBJ couldn't take him to the promised land. The only case of that... The only case that you have in the league probably right now of a wide receiver making a quarterback look good is Amari Cooper in Dallas. I would say that. Because Dak Prescott is just consistently average. And I think that's what you need. Like, if you, it's, it's bad when you have a bad quarterback in there. But if you have a guy that's consistently average, maybe invest in that wide receiver. And that's what Dallas did. They invested in Amari Cooper. And Amari Cooper played good football and, you know, helped Dak Prescott kind of get to that next level. Omari Cooper is really the only example I can think of that. You look at oh, and then of course you know you can't forget the legendary like Larry Fitzgerald. Like I mean, he hasn't taken like these bad Cardinals teams and dried them out of the gutter to take them to the playoffs. But when they reach the playoffs, Larry Fitzgerald is a game changer. There's not a lot of guys like that left. There's not a lot of Larry Fitzgeralds left in this business in the in the NFL. There's just not. 
It's the most overrated wide receiver. I mean, it's the most overrated position to invest to build a franchise around is the wide receiver position. Prove me wrong. I think that that... I mean, maybe it's a hot take to some of you, but I think it's a pretty cold take. I think a lot of you should agree with it. And, uh, yeah, so that's that's it for my rant about wide receivers. Um, I've been watching the Blue Jays recently. Of course, you know, I've been starting to get more into baseball. And right now, it's two bases, two people on base for the Orioles. Bottom of the ninth, the Blue Jays have an 8-6 to six lead. They led 8-2 to two at one point. But uh, they hit a grand slam or something. I don't know. I was out frisbee golfing. Which, if you have not done that and you have a frisbee golf course, go out and play frisbee golf. I'm telling you, it's a learning curve and I'm not good at it. But if you have a group of friends and you guys are looking for something to do to either stay in shape or just hang out, have a good time, you know, your friendship's kind of dying, go fucking frisbee golf. Frisbee golfing is so fun. And especially once you get the hang of it and you get good, I'm still not at that level yet. You have so much more fun. Just, you know, pack a cooler of beers, get your discs, go throw with your friends. It's just like golfing, but maybe for a younger millennial crowd. You know what I mean? Go frisbee golfing if you have the opportunity. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this Yee Yee Lifestyle Podcast. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the like before you exit the building. And that was episode number four of the Yee Yee Lifestyle. What'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at True Talks. Follow me on Twitter at True Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Fawn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them to just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, guess have a great day.